Hi Cancer, welcome to your end of July 2021 general tarot update. It's Raina here. So I've been mucking around with the camera settings because this is not my uh, go-to uh, phone that I record from. But, um, I, you know, something else happened with my other phone and it looked really washed out, but um, there was condensation in this phone lens before, so that might be what's what's uh, doing it but then when I was playing it back it looked pretty decent I don't know so it is what it is right um in any case so I apologize if it seems a little bit hazy um so the there's a there's a full moon that's coming up on the 23rd or 24th depending on where you live and it's going to be at one degree of Aquarius and Aquarius is your eighth house, and that is a very intense area. That's Scorpio's domain and, you know, full moon. Um, that should be a doozy or it should be very interesting. Um, and um, it's the first of two in Aquarius. So uh, just be prepared for that because um, this might be a time uh, in late July and late August where things come up for you on an emotional level that um, are ready to be cleared out. Yeah, now it really seems hazy. So anyway, um, the heart of the matter is, is the Seven of Cups. And you can see the person hesitating, looking or, or you know, seeming like they he can't decide, you know, what do I do? What do I pick? And of course, in this deck, they you know, have the snake again, because the snake sometimes can indicate deception. Although um, the snake is also that some serpent of wisdom and also representing the Kundalini. So it doesn't have to be something negative. Um, it's the, the point is that um, it can indicate that there are a lot of choices um, being offered you and it's up to you to figure out what is best for you. The other thing about this card is that it can indicate someone who is a bit, I don't know, engaging in wishful thinking, um, refusing to see the totality of a situation and just wanting it to be a certain way. And so especially if that person is making a decision, it can be a little bit um, risky because they're not really operating um, truthfully within themselves. They're, they're wanting to see things uh, in a very um, idealistic way that isn't necessarily what reality is uh, all about in that uh, situation. To kind of go into this more, we have, um, you know, kind of like illustrating this. We have the Knight of Cups in reverse. And so let's, you can see the card better in the upright version, the Knight of Cups. Um, the Knight of Cups in the reversed position um, can indicate the type of person that you're dealing with, um, Maybe this is a relationship or a potential relationship with someone who is um, emotionally unreliable. Maybe they're kind of almost a con artist. They're manipulative. They're trying to worm their way into your life. It's funny, that snake in, into someone's life. And um, yet they present themselves as the knight in shining armor. Uh, one of the things that I say to people, and this is something that I was, I have read about because I've been so interested in issues surrounding narcissism and, you know, even people with borderline personalities, which probably is a feature of a narcissist is what they're all about. But one of the things is, is if somebody tries to present themselves in an idealistic light, like they're perfect. And I've, I've heard, um, I'm going to just say women because they're the ones that tend to um, talk about relationships a lot. But um, they say he was the perfect gentleman and he just gave me flowers and blah, blah, blah. And when somebody is 
putting on that kind of an act and they're always, you know, they seem like they, they never have any kind of negative uh, behavior. I'm talking about, um, they just seem to, to put on their best face, but it's not real in the sense that everybody has off days and all that kind of thing. Then that can be a red flag. Obviously, if somebody's like a rageaholic, you know, that's not good either. But there are some people who really put on an act because they want to get that person you know, caught in their web. And the best way to solve that problem is to spend a lot of time with them. Some of these people will try to get you to commit to them, get married or move in together right away because they know that they can't keep up that act very long, that they don't have it within themselves. They don't have that emotional control, really. So isn't it interesting? The first two cards are both cups, um, now with the seven of cups, you may be deciding whether or not you want to, uh, continue to deal with this person. Uh, perhaps if you are someone who is technically single, this person may, um, be someone, they might even be like an ex or some, someone who's coming back, love bombing you. Um, another thing, too, is if this is job related, um, this may be a job that seems too good to be true. Um, there was something else. Oh, yeah, the Seven of Cups can be a card of addiction. So whether it's you are somehow cloudy in your thinking um, process or you're not really thinking clearly to make a good decision or if you're dealing with somebody who has an addiction, that could be what is represented here. Um, the higher message is the Queen of Wands. And this is about, it's funny, you know, I don't know if you can see in this haze. She's got, you know, the fire in her palm. And this is really a card of self-empowerment, uh, the feminine version of it. And, you know, confidence and things like that. So when you when you possess those traits you're not going to be like the seven of cups you're not going to be deluded uh, you're not going to lead yourself astray because you're going to know exactly what it is that you're dealing with um, there can be a deceptive quality with the knight of cups in reverse and sometimes you know when you hear people who get taken for a ride by somebody else it's almost like they're talking about being on some kind of a bender where they're, uh, they're like drunk for months straight or something because they're like, how did I fall under this person's spell? Well, a lot of that has to do with their, um, you know, I would say their own insecurities, that they did not have the strength to be able to walk away from a situation that they knew somewhere inside of themselves was not okay and that was you know kind of a destructive or negative and that includes anything um with a work related matter too because there might be somebody who is trying to um present something in a glowing way that is not what it appears to be what crosses you is the hangman. Now the hangman, oh, I love this card uh, in this particular deck. I really love this card. Um, I love those colors. The hangman is a card of being in this kind of a no man's land or um, what do they call that? Like uh, a holding pattern or like... It's, it's like you might be kept, um, you can't, you can't go, you can't go forward. You're just kind of waiting, like some kind of a, a waiting period or, or whatnot. But this is in the more negative sense. And basically in this type of a reading, I almost think of somebody jerking you around and making these promises, maybe empty promises. So an example would be you get involved with someone and you find out after the fact that they already have a partner and they're telling you, well, I'm going to, you know, 
leave that marriage or that relationship and you're just waiting and waiting and you have no evidence of that. Um, if that person has um, already, I mean, if you, especially if you found out that they had another part, that they actually had a relationship after, you, you know, they started getting involved with you, that's something that you should really look at because they did not come to you with that information. So those kinds of um, situations, that's why I say with the Seven of Cups is that there might be some kind of deception going on, self-deception that you have to own up to because um, it, it could be leading you astray. And the Queen of Wands to me can be that if you start working on yourself and building yourself up, self-love, these kinds of things, that you will be able to break free from anyone trying to keep you in that no man's land with their empty promises. Yep, and this is great. What's coming in? The strength card. Now in this deck, I notice, let's see what number it is. Oh, they have it as an eight. Yeah, this is, sometimes it's an 11, and this one it's an 8. Oh, I see here, do you see how her face is half lion? This reminds me of the Lyrans or the Lyrans, those um, star seeds. But um, she has a lamb here. She doesn't have a lion with her. But the strength, so, you know, that's interesting that they, that they depict this with a, a lamb. Because really, and you see that uh, eight, which is actually the infinity symbol, the, the sideways eight. Um, what I think, the reason I think that they use a lamb instead of a lion, although, although her face is half lion, is because um, s there is strength in softness. So, you know, people who try to assert themselves by being aggressive um, that's not true strength. So I, I love that actually. Um, but anyway, this is all about, again, you know, stepping into your own dignity, your own sense of autonomy and, uh, and becoming stronger, but it's a, it's more of an internal strength. And so that will give you the ability to break free from, uh, relationships that are harmful um, that don't serve you. And these relationships can be both professional and, and personal. The question is if you are willing to see them for what they are. And this includes people promising you things that they're not delivering. So it is, you know, it isn't easy sometimes. Um, for instance, when you're working someplace or you're being offered a job you may feel you know compelled to just jump at it because it's like what if nothing else comes along and um that's where where the the faith comes in that you're going to be able to find what you need when you need it um and then the outcome card and usually i do not um end with reversed cards, but not all reversed cards are negative, um, you know, in their upside down positions. I'm going to show you how it is. Now, this is the um, upright position. The Hierophant, I think that's almost like the tree of life in a sense, but you see that it's almost like the stairway to heaven. Um, the Hierophant card uh, connects to the spiritual, um, but it's also a card of conformity. And so in the reverse position, this can be a card of um, rejecting the, uh, this is a card of marriage as well. Um, if you are in a situation where you're with someone, maybe you are married to someone who promises to change and they never do, maybe they have an addiction and they are, you know, leaving you in this um, holding pattern, the sense of like, you can't move on with your life and you can't, you know, make your life okay the way it is right now, because that other person isn't really willing to change. They're kind of jerking you around. 
um, it's you may have to turn your back on some of those things that you thought were um, guarantees and sometimes that includes marriage and all the other things and also I just want to say too even with the type of belief system the spiritual belief system because that might be what is happening for you here maybe there's some kind of a spiritual group that you belong to that really isn't delivering um is kind of vague uh the seven of cups to me is a very vague energy and you're not feeling like you're um gaining anything from it and um but i would say um especially if it's more of the conventional religion because the higher fan in reverse is like being um more unorthodox so if that's something that you have been noticing you've been unsatisfied with the conventional belief system that you've been experiencing then maybe this is uh more something you're evolving into is more unor unorthodox and actually uh neptune is has been transiting in pisces for probably about 10 9 or 10 years now and this is in your ninth house, which to, which I feel is more associated with organized religion. And so this is the Neptune energy is more that is actually connected to the seven of cups. So that would go along with that kind of um, more mystical than, or, you know, orthodox religion of the Hierophant. Okay, that's what I have for you, Cancer. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.